Hello and welcome. Today I will be showing you how to make a custom ASP Core backend for your game. It would be safe to say that my balls are tingling. I'm combining two of my favorite things, servers and games, and uh, I just hope you enjoy. So in the first episode, I'm going to be showing you how to scaffold the projects, how to share models between both your server and your Unity project. Uh, I'm going to show you what the hell an ASP Core application actually is, what an API is, how it works. I'll show you how to uh, get data from your game to the server and server to the game. In part two, I'll be adding authentication and authorization as well as hooking it up to a database. So if that's all you really need to see, head across to part two if it's out. Uh, but yeah, let's just get stuck in. So what you want to do is if you're starting fresh, which is how I'm going to do it here, uh, create your main root folder. Okay. I'm going to be calling this project game server. All right. So let's create the application. I'm using the writer IDE. Uh, you may be using visual studio. That's perfectly fine. Uh, everything is accomplished in roughly the same way. It's just the windows might look differently, but the projects themselves exactly the same. So in writer, I'm just going to go new solution. I'm going to call this game server. And this is the folder, my root folder here. So I'm just gonna put it there. I'm not going to create a directory for the solution and create. And that will just give us this very bare solution. Basically, it's just a solution file with no projects whatsoever. I'm not gonna go over both steps in both IDEs every time, but just to show you how similar it is, uh, in Visual Studio, you just go create a new project. Uh, you'd go blank solution like that. Then you'd pick your solution name and away you go. So everything is roughly the same. You just access it in different ways uh, depending on the IDE. All right, there is way too much in this tutorial to explain everything. So if I brush over something, that's up to you to go and Google. Uh, otherwise this is going to be a 25 piece tutorial, which I do not want that to be. So uh, to begin, let's create a new project inside of the solution. So I'm going to go add new project. And this first one will be an ASP.NET Core web application. Make sure you're, you're using Core because that means it's cross-platform. It can be used on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Uh, make sure you don't use this, which is the old .NET standard. Uh, sorry, the .NET framework version, uh, which is just for Windows. So .NET Core. Uh, you'll be able to select a type, whether it's here or in Visual Studio. I'm going to be doing a web API. This is just like the initial scaffold of, of the application. It'll just give you some sample code to show you like roughly how to do it. Uh, C Sharp authentication, no authentication. We'll do that ourselves. And let's just call this server. And it's going to go in the root folder there and press create. Next, we need to share data between Unity and the server, right? So a newbie way to do that would be to duplicate the models, right? Put it on server and Unity, which uh, by the way, is what a lot of people do when working with say a C-sharp backend and a JavaScript frontend. They'll, they'll duplicate the models, uh, which is hella messy and hugely error prone. So anyway, to alleviate that, what we'll do is we will create a new project and this will be a class library. And I'm just going to call this shared library. I would have normally called it library, but Unity themselves have the library folder, right? So that would clash. So shared library and create. So all that is, is when you build it, it's just a binary and it's just got all these classes in it. So our first class, for example, let's just rename that right now to something like player. And let's make a few properties. So uh, maybe a level and maybe a float here. And that can be health. We've got this library here and it's got a player and that's all it's got. So what is an API and specifically what is an ASP Core API? It is what we call a RESTful service. So basically we open up all these endpoints and while no one's hitting it, it's just sitting there idle, right? As soon as someone hits it, it'll run some logic and it will return data or it will post some data, put some data in a database, whatever. It's just receiving requests and sending responses, okay? Simple as that. And what actually sucks is their sample controller is just like super verbose. I don't, it doesn't need to be this complex and scary looking. So let's actually delete this weather forecast controller and weather forecast. Let's just delete those and let's make our own, which will be much simpler. Player controller. Now controller is not only convention, but required in this framework for it to be picked up and auto mapped. And we will inherit from controller base. Controller base is what allows us to actually make this a controller and provides us with a whole bunch of uh, controller functionality. We need a few other things. The first one will be API controller. And lastly is the routes. It allows us to not have to do any kind of manual mapping for our controllers for them to actually be active. They'll just automatically be there for us. So you just put in some brackets and write controller, which is the convention that we're using here. 
Okay, so now we have our controller set up. And a good way to think about the controller is just a group of endpoints. And then inside of this controller, we actually write our endpoints. So for example, we'll write one now where we will return a player Aha, uh -huh. so we don't actually have access to this player right now because it's in the shared library. So there's a few ways to add a reference to this project into this project. Uh, if you're using Writer or ReSharper for Visual Studio, it should just be able to find it automatically. Although who knows, maybe uh, the new version of Visual Studio can also do that. If that doesn't work, uh, right click on your server, add, add reference, and just click your shared library here. So now this project has this as a dependency. And here we'll just include the missing reference. And then, so this function is going to return a player and let's just call it get. And then in here, let's just make a new player like that. And then down here, we will return that player. Uh, easy as pie. Uh, another thing that you need to do, and this is the last bit of boilerplate, I promise. Uh, just say that this is in fact a get request as opposed to like a post or a patch or a put. So a get request is just a endpoint that you can call with no payload and you can get some uh, data back. All right, so that's actually all you need to set up your first get request. So let's just run it. And you'll see this Swagger interface. And Swagger is just a API docs auto-generated plugin kind of thing. And it just allows you to see all your endpoints. Uh, I actually usually turn it off, which I'll show you how to do later. Yep, my application has found my uh, player endpoint, my player controller, because we've used the correct convention and decorated it with these attributes. And we can actually try it out. Let's execute it. And it has responded with uh, our player. Cool beans. All right, next, what if we would like to actually post data to our server? So that is accomplished just as easy. Let's do a HTTP post public and let's actually return a player still. So like maybe they created the player and when we actually return the player back to them, it's got a, a, an actual ID that has been assigned by the database. So let's say post and this will accept a player object. And then in here, we'll just say, uh, player has been added to the database. And then let's just assume the player has been added to the database. It was probably given an ID, uh, a unique ID. So we'll actually return the player. Cool, so now if we press run, we'll see now we have two endpoints, one get and one post. So if we go to the post here, we can try out the endpoint and let's just say level uh, seven. This is ridiculous because it's not actually gonna do anything. Uh, but yeah, it's returning it's returning our model that we just sent. So we've got a post and a get, but what if you need a little bit more control over what you're querying? Uh, what if you would like a player with an ID of 100 say, and actually we don't have an ID on here. So let's just add an ID, int ID. So there's a few ways to send data through. Uh, we can do it via query strings. So let's do it like that from query. And this will be int ID. And then here, let's just uh, trick it and say the ID is the ID that we asked. Let's just pretend that we got it from the database. So if we try that, and this is from query. So let's go to our player endpoint. And then with query strings, you put a uh, question mark and you say ID, for example, because that's what we are calling our property. And let's just say is equal to 100. So as you can see, it is passing through that level of 100 there. So that's one way to do it with query strings. And by the way, if you needed more query strings, let's say um, string name, for example, you would do it like this. So you only have a question mark for the first one. After the second one, you now need a ampersand and you'll put name like that, okay? Next is to do it via route. So this is probably the better way to do it when you're just doing a simple query like this. So you can do, um, like this and you can do ID and we'll change this from query to from route. So now when we press play, we get it like this. We go player forward slash and then uh, 150. So that's doing it via route. So depending on what you wanna do, especially if it's a website, you've, you've always got uh, different options for different uh, context. Okay, so let's actually talk about how this program is constructed. So here we've got this program file. Now this actually in .NET 5 and below used to be two files, startup and program, and they have combined them and also removed a heap of boilerplate. So now we've just got this nice top level block of code, much nicer to work with. So let's do a few things. 
and simplify this. For one, I don't want Swagger anymore, that API construction thing. So I'm gonna remove these two things, Swagger and API Explorer. And I'm also going to remove these. And I'm also actually going to remove the NuGet package. So depending on if you're in Writer or uh, Visual Studio, uh, just right click your actual server application and go ma manage NuGet packages. Um, as you can see, I've got this swashbuckle here. I'm going to remove that just to make it all clean. And also one more bit of cleanup from that is, uh, you know, when you press the start on the application, it actually automatically goes to the that Swagger documentation. That's because we need to change our launch settings. So this is set to Swagger, the launch URL. I'm just gonna set that to player. Uh, I know this is very rapid fire, but uh, you pause if you need to keep up. So this class is split into two separate parts, although it kind of doesn't really look like it. First is the dependency injection part. So if you don't know what dependency injection is, it is the concept of supplying a pre-built uh, class to other classes and objects so that these other classes and objects don't have to build it themselves. Now this provides a whole bunch of benefits. One of the major ones is how easy it is to test. Actually, let me just show you a really quick uh, example. So let's create a folder here and I'm gonna call this services. And in services, I'm going to make a new file and I'm going to call this player service. Golly, golly, player service, make that a bit bigger. In here, I'm going to have a function that is going to return void and it's gonna be called do something. And it's just gonna write a line that says, hey. Uh, so, but just pretend that this is doing a whole bunch of stuff like uh, actually grabbing the players from the database, uh, querying the players, uh, listing players, changing players, whatever. For now, we're just gonna have it do something. And now say that we want this uh, player service all over the place, right? Uh, sure, we could construct it every time we need it, or we could use dependency injection. So let's go to program and let's say builder services. Uh, and I'm going to add a scoped version. So basically what scoped means is every single time the controller is accessed, it's going to create what are, whatever I'm trying to give it brand new. All right. And this will be the player service, just like that. And now in my player controller, I can just create a constructor and inside my constructor, I can request for the player service, player service. And then I'll create a field here equals player service. So now in my get request, I can do uh, player service dot do something. And if we run the application and hit up player, and that is actually with a route, isn't it? And then we go over here and we'll see that hey has actually been written to the console. So yeah, super easy to use dependency injection and makes it very, very nice uh, to test. As I said, it makes it nice and easy to test. And I'll show you actually how to do that because it's a it's a vital lesson. So let's create an interface instead and let's call this iPlayer service. And this is going to have that function signature. And then this is going to inherit from iPlayer. So implement uh, iPlayer service. And then let's also have another one here, which is called mock uh, player service. So, hey, from the mock service. So now in our program, we can say, we can change this to iPlayer service. So we know that this service that we're injecting is of type iPlayer service, and then we can give it a the concrete class. So for now, let's say we wanna use the mock player service because I wanna test this. And let's just say this main service is actually making database calls and it's actually affecting the database. But of course I don't wanna do that on a production database, right? I just wanna test that all my logic is working. So now I just go to program and I send in my mock class do all my tests and then for production, we change it back and just remove the mock, right? That's an easy way to test your services. Super, super easy. Um, all right, oh, and of course, because we're actually injecting iPlayer service, we actually have to uh, accept iPlayer service here, not service, or that would have thrown a error. All right, so that's the dependency injection part. The next part here is the pipeline or adding your middlewares. So basically this code will run every single time uh, one of these endpoints are, are hit, okay? So for this first one, for example, once you've got your server in production, if someone tries to go to your endpoint 
here, but with HTTP, this will automatically redirect them and they'll use the HTTPS version. This one offers authorization, which I'm going to get into in the uh, next video. And then this one maps the controllers. So it's actually looking for the convention of player controller and then it maps it as a player controller. Another thing, because we removed Swagger, we actually have no easy way to test this post, right? Because of course we can do a get, but you can't add a payload in uh, in a browser like this. So what I use to test my uh, post request is Postman. Uh, and I'll just show you how this works. So with player, we can just do player and 500, level 500 player, and you'll see that it has made the get request. Uh, and then I also was going to show you the post. So let's actually copy this and let's just uh, post it right back. So I'm going to add a body to this raw. It's gonna be JSON send and as you can see we have now uh tested the get and the post everything works <sighs> okay so i feel like i'm covering a trillion topics all which need their own tutorial but uh sorry about that but not sorry uh last thing we need to do is communicate between our server and our game so it would be nice if we could simply uh add a reference like we did here, right? We, we added a reference to our shared library from our server, but it's not that easy with Unity. It's a little bit more fiddly. So, and actually we haven't even created our game yet. So let's go to Unity Hub, new project. Um, I'm going to put it in the root of my game server project uh, folder. And I'm just gonna call my game, game. Very imaginative. All right, so once your game has been created, go ahead and just create a scripts folder and create your first script. I'm just going to call this the game manager. So without a, without a script, the actual uh, solution for this game doesn't get created. So just create that first and I'm just gonna open that up. Okay, so there is the option to add our game to this solution here and kind of keep it all in one IDE. But I strongly suggest against it because a lot of the time you're going to be debugging the server and you're wanting to be debugging the game at the same time. And it just, it's really clumsy. So I keep them as separate solutions, but you can add it here just in the same way that you added the shared library. Uh, just know that I suggest against it. So what we want to do is when this shared library is changed for it to build, and then copy the DLL into our Unity project. That's how they can, that's how Unity can use the code. So let's create a folder. I'm gonna call this DLLs. Uh, that looks weird like that, DLLs, that's better. And obviously we don't wanna do that manually. So we can create a uh, little script. So right click on your shared library, uh, go to edit, and then edit the shared library CS proj. That'll just be slightly different uh, if you're using Visual Studio, but this will be the same. In here, let's do a post build event. Now I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be using copy, but you might be on Linux, so you might have to do something slightly different. Uh, I'm going to copy the shared library, DLL, and use a special little argument here called out der. And then here, what we need to do is go back a whole bunch of folders uh, and then put it into our game folder. It's a, it's a little bit messy. If somebody knows a better way to do this, please tell me in the comments. But uh, effectively what we're gonna be doing is this, back a few, and then we'll be going into our game folder and then into our assets folder and then into our DLLs folder. And then finally, we're going to be calling it shared library.dll. And I bet you that's wrong, but uh, we can check that easily by just going build. And you'll see that it has indeed copied. And if we are just amazing, it'll already be, oh, <laughs> first time. Cool. So that's what you wanna do. Obviously you'll need to change this depending on how you set up your project. And as code has changed on Unity now, we actually need to go inside Unity so it can compile. And you'll see we've got our shared library here. And you don't actually need to change anything here. In our game manager, let's actually see if we can access the, uh, Classes, new player, there we go. In our shared library. So it's added the shared library uh, namespace. Let's get rid of those puppies. 
Excellent. So now we have models that are being shared across two projects, which makes it super duper easy. Now that is one massive advantage over using a node server for any C Sharp client. You can share your models. All right. So next is to actually call the API and get the actual data. So I have created this little HTTP client uh, that uses uh, the Unity web request. Unity web request in my opinion is fucking disgusting. And I hate how it has to be in a coroutine. It makes it hard to use, hard to return data. So I did this kind of like little uh, workaround so that I've got an asynchronous workflow here. Uh, I'll include this on my Patreon as well as this whole project. So you can just download this whole project and fire it up and you'll have a game and a server uh, built for you. All right, so before we do this, let's actually make sure that our server is running. So let's run it and let's copy the endpoint here. And then in our game, let's do var player equals, and I'm going to use my HTTP client here and get, and this is going to be of type player. And then in here, we're going to use that and then say level 500. And this is an asynchronous uh, function. So I'm going to make that a wait and async here. Um, and then let's set a little breakpoint and uh, press debug, start a debug session. And over here, I'm just going to attach my game manager to this any script and press play. And what have we got here? We have got none. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> One last thing to make this work is that the Unity uh, JSON utility is garbage and it's super temperamental and you need to hold its hand every step of the way. There are two problems. One, the Unity JSON utility cannot uh, deserialize properties. So it has to be fields. So let's make those fields. And the thing that sucks is that the default JSON serializer for .NET Core, uh, which is system.text.json, doesn't, it actually ignores fields. It only looks for properties. Now, what we could do is add a JSON uh, include here. But this actually now includes this namespace in our library, uh, which will also make Unity shit its pants. So we're not gonna do it that way. We're just going to change the default uh, serializer for our server. So in program, where we've got add controllers here, this is where we change our default serializer. I know this is probably word spaghetti to you, but just bear with me. And we'll add a new NuGet package here. And this will be uh, the aspcore.mvc.newtonsoft. Uh, by the way, if you haven't heard of Newtonsoft, it is actually the most popular library, the most downloaded library ever in the whole e uh, C-sharp ecosystem. So make sure you're using the correct version that you're using. I'm using uh, .NET 6. So I'm just gonna install that in my project. And it's in. Now here I can just say, uh, add Newtonsoft JSON. So that will now allow us to serve the fields. Now, the second of two problems is that for Unity JSON serializer to actually deserialize something, the name casing has to be uh, spot on. So uh, this server by default returns camel case because that is the standard for front end uh, JavaScript, uh, but we actually need it to return Pascal case. So it matches our model exactly. And that's very easy to add. We'll just add some options here. And in here we'll say serializer settings and set the contract, contract resolver equals to a new default contract resolver. I know that's a bit weird, but this will allow us to return Pascal case. And actually I didn't even demonstrate that, did I? So I'm just going to remove that. I'm gonna run it and let's actually ping the endpoint. So you'll see here that it's returning uh, camel case. And now if we remove it, you're about to have your minds blown. It indeed returns uh, Pascal case now. So now that we have fondled uh, <laughs> Unity's uh, JSON serializers balls, we can finally actually use it and it will accept uh, what we're sending it. Um, so let's run the server. Let's go across to our game. Uh, that all looks good. We've got a breakpoint. Let's start debugging. Let's press play. And that should hit our breakpoint over here. And let's see, have we grabbed our player? Yes, we have. And actually, you know what, what I should be showing you is that the endpoint is actually hit on the server. So uh, let's go to our server and then in the player controller, let's set a breakpoint here in our get request and we'll debug it instead of just running it. And then let's play our game so that we can make the request. And as you can see, the endpoint has been hit with ID 500 and we'll come down here and we'll do our player service and we'll say, hey, 
uh, somewhere in our console. Hey. So now we've set up all our projects, we're sharing the models between them, we're doing all this fiddly stuff to make it work with Unity, uh, we're posting and we're getting. So in the next video, I'm gonna be setting up authentication and authorization, as well as uh, hooking up a little database. So stay tuned for that, subscribe, like the video, and uh, I hope you learned something and I hope this was actually fun. And uh, I'll see you next time, bye.